So you want to spread the joy of board games to some of the non-gamers in your life, but of course, want to get them something they'd like. Well, with the holiday gift shopping season right around the corner, here at Board Game Casual, we've put together a list of six board game recommendations for six different types of personalities you might be shopping for. Before we get into the list, I wanted to thank the good folks over at Harbor Loot for sponsoring this video. Harbor Loot is a company founded by passionate gamers that make awesome board game accessories like dice, premium dice trays, dice shaker cups, and more. You can check out all they have to offer at harborloot.com. Maybe you're shopping for some kids in your life who have an appetite for destruction. In which case, I highly recommend checking out the board game Catapult Feud. Catapult Feud is a game my brother and I would have killed for when we were kids. In fact, I think most of how we would play was unknowingly trying to recreate something similar. Catapult Feud is a two-player game, so particularly good if you're buying for siblings who keep each other entertained, where each player builds a castle out of plastic blocks on opposite sides of the table and positions their own figurines within. Then, each player takes turns firing the included catapults, launching these chunky rubber balls into each other's castles, trying to do as much damage as possible and be the first to knock out all of their opponent's figurines. It's exciting, it's fun, and it keeps the mayhem in a contained environment. I personally have had great success gifting this game to some of my friends' kids. It's got a big toy factor to it, but definitely something the adults will want to turn at too. If on the other hand, you're looking for a game that the whole family can play together, perhaps with a little more strategy, but still with a fun brawl for all theme that's exciting enough to pull the kids away from their video games, then I recommend King of Tokyo. In King of Tokyo, you and your opponents are playing as kaiju, or giant cartoony monsters similar to Godzilla and King Kong, rampaging through the city, battling to be either the last monster standing or the first to 20 victory points. It's a fun, easy game to learn, but gives players interesting choices and strategic decisions to make. The core mechanism are these chunky dice, which you roll Yahtzee style, meaning after your initial roll, you can re-roll as many or as few of the dice as you want two more times. Do you want to try to roll for points? Do you want to try to attack your enemies? Do you want to heal yourself? Or maybe you want to buy some power-ups, making your monster more powerful. As long as you aren't buying the dark version, the game is full of bright, colorful artwork and whimsical characters. Half the fun is choosing which monster to be. For a long time, King of Tokyo was one of my go-to games for introducing people into the hobby of modern board games. And it always seems to be a hit with kids. Maybe you know some folks who enjoy but are only familiar with classic board games. That aunt and uncle who regularly play Scrabble and Rummy Cube, or the friends who are still playing Monopoly or Yahtzee. Well, what better way to introduce them to a modern board game than by gifting them Splendor. Splendor was my calling card for years and is still my go-to for anyone who I know enjoys classic board games. Splendor will feel familiar, yet you can always see people light up when the mechanisms start to click and they realize what a board game can be. You can play up to four players, it's easy to teach, easy to learn, and plays quick enough that you can play multiple games back to back. I've given this away as gifts more times than I can count, and even as gifts for white elephant parties and things like that. For the puzzle lover in your life, whether they love jigsaw puzzles, crosswords, Sudoku, or Tetris, maybe consider getting them a copy of The Genius Square. The Genius Square is a little polyomino puzzle game where players are racing to be the first to place their Tetris-style pieces into their board around the block squares that are rolled randomly before every game. The wooden components are nice and chunky and are very satisfying to place into the raised grid. And somehow, no matter where those blockers turn out, there will always be at least one way to place all of your pieces. 
The game comes with two boards and two sets of components, which means you can either play the game solo and time yourself to see how quickly you can place all your pieces, or you can play head to head with another player to see who can do it first. The beauty of this game, however, is that if you want to play with more people, you can buy more copies of the game, and there's no limit to how many people can be racing against each other. My buddy Andrew got this for his mom, and she liked it so much, she bought copies for all her friends, and now they all get together regularly and play in a big group. If you've got a dude bro or sorority sister in your life that loves drinking games like beer pong, cornhole, and flip cup, then you should absolutely get them a copy of Hook and Ring Battle. I guarantee it's a gift that'll be a surefire hit. In fact, chances are they'll know exactly what the game is when they see it, but probably didn't know that you could get this game in a tabletop version. In Hook and Ring Battle, players are going head to head, swinging their rings, trying to catch it on the hook. Every time you do, you get to move the wooden marker one space on the tracker towards your opponent, trying to win by pushing it all the way over the line. But let's be real, the size of that wooden marker is no coincidence. It's designed to be perfectly substituted with a shot glass filled with the drink of your choice. There's a lot of different brands and productions of these hook and ring games out there, so you could go as fancy or as unique as you want. I really like this hook and ring battle version by Buffalo Games because it's modestly priced, you can take it apart for easier storage, and because of how easy they make it to adjust the tension in the lines. And finally, for that friend who loves party games, where after dinner out come the charades, Pictionary, or Taboo, I highly recommend gifting them a copy of Green Team Wins. It's a really entertaining, super easy to play game that gets everyone involved, but doesn't put anyone uncomfortably on the spot. So it's easy going and a ton of fun. In each round, you'll flip a card over that has a multiple choice or fill in the blank question, and everyone writes their answers on a dry erase board and reveals simultaneously. If you answer with the majority, you join the green team and get points. So the goal here is to try to think about what everyone else is going to choose. A single copy of Green Team Wins can play up to six players, but like the Genius Square, the beauty is that if you want to play with more people, you can just get another copy of the game. In fact, if you wanted to expand the player count on the cheap, you could just buy some generic dry erase cards and markers on Amazon, and there's no limit to how many people that you can play with. This is also a great game to have at a big family gathering. Everyone can play, from the kids to grandma. As long as they can write, they can play. So there you have it, six gift ideas for six types of non-gamers. I hope this gives you some inspiration if you're looking to get someone a gift and really wanna show them just how fun modern board games can be. There's so many great games that I think would be enjoyed by different types of people. It was honestly hard limiting it to six and limiting it to just one game for each type of person. I might have to do another video like this, so if you like this video and wanna see more, let me know down in the comments. And if you've got a great game recommendation for a specific type of non-gamer, or you have a great example of a game that you've given someone that they've really enjoyed, put it down in the comments as I'm sure people looking for gifts would love more ideas, myself included. Thanks so much for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.